Soul Tribe, welcome to this pick a card reading where we're going to look at your hidden gifts. This is inspired for the transit of Pluto in retrograde that is for the last time visiting the last degrees of Capricorn. So September 1st to October 10th, 2024. In the real or YouTube short that I shared, um, this was about realizing that our joy, our happiness is not only our remedy, but also our gift. Gift to other people, gift to humanity. And I really felt that the question of realizing our particular hidden gift would really support everyone in this phase okay so what we're gonna do because you see there's a lot of cards and I was not surprised many cards wanted to show up obviously those are gifts so it seems that we're pretty gifted here on the soul tribe and I'm excited about this we'll use the tarot cards later uh, if we have any questions and we're going to pick the pile using this deck and I'm going to pull some Zodiac Association. If some of you want to watch uh, a particular placement, I would say the sun as we're trying to put the light on what's hidden. You know, that's the power of the sun bringing that higher consciousness. So let's look at the piles. How many piles? Sometimes I say three and four comes up. So we'll see. Okay, see? <laughs> I found three, but... Let's see if that's correct. Yes. Okay. So let's look at pile number one with Archangel Zadkiel. Strengthen your boundaries. Wonderful. Pile number one. What are your hidden gifts? Hmm. Pile number two, Archangel Ariel with Connect with Nature. Beautiful. What are your hidden gifts? And pile number three, Archaea Mercy with Cherish Your Sacredness. Wow, I, I've never pulled this card before. Love it. Beautiful, beautiful. What are your hidden gifts? Okay, so if you like to choose according to your zodiac placement, Let's do this right now. Uh, pile number one. What do we have? First, we have Aries. Pile number one. This one is coming out. So, okay, Leo. A lot of fire here. Let me move this. There we have Scorpio. Gemini. Aquarius for pile number two. Oop. Capricorn. I put them on their, my desk so I don't see them. <laughs> okay. Um, then pile number two, Sagittarius. Okay. And Taurus. Okay. Pile number three. What do we have left? Okay. We have Libra. We have Cancer. We have Virgo. And we have Pisces. All right. So that's one way to choose if you would like to um, choose according to your zodiac sign. All right. I'm going to move on to shuffling the cards and making the piles. If you want to jump straight to your reading, you can. But I'm going to be uh, recording this part as well. Let's create those piles. Pile number one. Okay. 
I feel those too. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, all right. We we'll have this one, this one, and this one. Okay. Okay. Pile number one. This one wanted to come in. Okay, let's see. We're going to have quite a story. <laughs> All right, that's going to be pile number one. Let's move on to pile number two. Pile number two. Let's see what cars are coming up for you. I can hit this and this one. Sometimes I feel the cars, this one has been, <laughs> you can feel it, the, the almost like the heat uh, in the palms. Wow. Okay. All right. We'll see what that means. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. And we're going to have quite a, some revelation with those hidden gifts. I'm really excited about this. Okay. Okay, that's going to be for pile number two. Let's move on to pile number three. Okay, pile number three. We have a lot that's going on, but we'll take that. Patience. Because that seems to be part of the process here. Okay. All right, maybe you had to overcome a lot of, you know, impatience. <laughs> pile number three. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And sometimes I just feel them, you know, on top. They just have an aura to them. Yep, this one too. Okay. All right. And let's get started with those messages. If you chose pile number one, let's look at your hidden gifts. So let's look again at the first card, Archangel Zadkiel, with strengthen your boundaries. And if you chose your zodiac sign, again, Aries, Leo, we got Gemini and Scorpio. We're going to move those onto the side so we can have a little bit more space here. Okay, so let's start the story here. I do feel that those piles might be revealed in um, different sections. I really feel that there might be some different parts of this message. So let's look at the first part. Ooh, I didn't even know this card existed here. Intuition. Trust your intuition. It's a great time to learn a new skill, change careers, or invest money. Okay. Now, I'm going to just pull first the cards so we can get all those messages together. Then you have the tree of life. Intuition, the tree of life. The witness. And the hunter. We have transition. With while I sleep, I move from the old to the new with great ease. And the let go. Okay, pile number one. Right away, what I can tell you is that 
you definitely feel that some of your hidden gifts and one of them particularly is your intuition is through your extra senses it seems that you might also be gifted with the gift of sight or if you see this uh, third eye energy with the witness also being able to connect to nature and connect through those hyper extra senses connect to the movements of the earth of Gaia just like the hunter here so sensitive to even maybe some of you I don't know why I'm, I'm getting this but reading the wind hearing messages from nature through the whispers of the wind through the patterns of nature you're definitely someone and that might be something again because those are hidden gifts you might be in the process of opening up more and more to those gifts um, with that transition card I really feel that and we had also the Scorpio energy in this pile uh, you know maybe being able to gather information before they happen whether it is through your dreams whether it is just through oh, this is interesting I had an image of you touching like um, psychometry I think it is called uh, you touching objects touching trees and getting information you have hyper senses uh, you might also be connected to nature uh, to the animals this is what I, I wanted to to say um, connected through the shamanic ways to a specific or particular specific totem animals and with this it gives you you know it's like that extra sensitivity okay if some of you feel like oh I don't think I can do this or I'm that intuitive or I am this clairvoyant clairsentient the work here okay would be to strengthen your boundaries because some people don't realize you know a lot of empaths there you can be so overwhelmed by the amount of senses and downloads so you're receiving all the time a lot of information that you can get lost into that translation here with the let go um that's going to also be part of you know helping people transition so maybe some of you it could be just even like a career of being a nurse being a doctor uh being a doula uh, someone that helps people pass on that could be a priest you know this type of transition between life and death there is definitely here some strong ability to tap into this type of gift yeah let's look at the second layer of this gift or gifts if they're different we have oof, the dreams the universe speaks to you through your dreams <laughs> you're hearing you're someone that can hear the whispers of the subconscious also that's what I'm feeling so some of you maybe once you're 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 really good with your boundaries and again this is a picker card for what are your hidden gifts so some of you you know will channel a little bit of um you know energy work if you need support into deepening activating this okay at the end of this reading but you're definitely someone that is um gifted with also when people talk um pick up on their subconscious maybe some of you you can hear different uh conversation at the same time 
You can also, through your senses, you know, you could be, it feels like very, uh, you know, secret agent <laughs> when I'm like looking at this, like, you know, be sitting at a table and able to listen to other conversation, not because you want to, but just you're picking up on a lot of signals. Um, just having this ability to, um, we call this like dolphin brain, you know, being able to receive information just like through sound waves from different directions. Mm -hmm. And when I said directions, I also heard dimensions. Yeah, let's see. The cave. Wow. The vi <laughs> I mean, you can make that up. You know, okay. The apocalypsis, what <laughs> apocalypsis again, an energy of an eye here in the center. Okay, let me I'll put it in. And then the eternal child. Wow. Maybe the healing is going to come. Those are the heal, heal yourself card deck. Mm. Now things are making a lot more sense. Okay. Wow, I did not see it at first, but look at this. More eyes. Okay, so Claire Voyance, I'm claiming it for sure. Okay, you're meant to be clairvoyant, clairsentient, claircognizant. Uh, but definitely as far as receiving images, okay, from and with this, the transition and the apocalypse, I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Um, I feel like transitional time, some of you, you could be really good at, um, you know, receiving guidance from different, different phases of time. So that means from past or future. Um, and also, with the transition and the inner child here, eternal child, I feel like even the soul entering, the soul entering onto earth, the new souls, just the same way, souls coming in, but also souls leaving, okay? So I do feel that, wow, you're very, pile number one, you're highly myst mystical. And, you know, with all this type of transit, the hunter, the... the the senses, you know, it's, you have like a very shamanic energy, earth angel energy, star seed energy, um, and the development of, and the upcoming, okay, or coming out of those gifts, because remember the title is hidden. Uh, some of you may have already started this process, but this is something that is your birthright, this is something that is also going to help you with your dreams. I would say that um, dream journals could really help you develop this type of ability. Also looking at how you dream something and what happens the next day and try to start bringing the language, be, bringing the intertwinement between uh, what you're dreaming and how you're being guided through that day and, and being a witness of all of this, okay? I really feel that uh, dream journaling could be a very great support to this. I remember when I had my, um, you know, many layers of awakening, but I did dream journal for 10 years. I was a big journal person, okay? But at some point, it, it just got sped up where I literally was dreaming my upcoming day. And because of the journaling, it really started putting, you know, the, those pieces together. So I would really uh, put the emphasis, and I wanted to share one thing, one thing that really helped me with 
remembering and also um you know, decalcifying my pineal gland and, you know, my activating my third eye was before going to bed, I was drinking a little bit of apple cider vinegar and water, so diluted, and drinking this every night on an empty stomach before going to bed and trying to be as light as possible, so not having a dinner uh, too close to my bedtime. I would have at least two hours, if not more, and that helped The silence of my body helped this type of activation, okay? So some of you, um, I feel that you're seeing it. It's like it's an eye and there's almost like with this energy reminds me uh, the movie Apocalypto, um, which is very, uh, you know, um, it's, it's very intense energy. And I think like the main character was connected to the jaguar. Again, an animal, you know, that has strong instincts that can see in the dark. So I feel as some of you, even part of this gift is through your shadow work. Going within, going within your own cave is going to help activate the vision. It's a different type of vision. It's the vision... I posted about this months ago about how it was a very popular reel. I think it's six millions. It was incredible where it was about, you know, people will think that uh, what makes you shine is your light, but it actually is your capacity to see through darkness, And that's what I feel for you, pile number one, that's very strong, you know, especially here, your witness, if you're able to witness your, in your own silence, in your own meditative space, you know, when you close your eyes and you're just breathing and just witnessing the same way you witness the reality of nature, you know, or whatever surrounds you when you are within you'll start picking up on things that are going to blow your mind, okay? I really feel as some of you, that's, that's, you might have like very uh, intense uh, and very (laughs) original uh, experiences through meditation. That's something you haven't done just yet. Like, trust me, this is, this is part of your abilities. So let's look at those heal um, yourself cards, because maybe they're part of this. Wow, okay, we have pride, and then we have cycles. This is interesting. Um, you know, with the pride here, maybe there's, a, there's an attachment to a certain image of yourself. I know that <laughs> I've always had those abilities of clairvoyance, clairaudience, especially clairaudience, oh my... Um, but it was, you know, a lot of the children that have, that remember those abilities, they shut it down when they start understanding that they're, might not be surrounded by people that are in that space or that receptivity or speak that type of language. So I feel that a part of the healing is, is also to, remove some of the mask. But now that I put it like this, do you remember how I said the transition between life and death? Some of you are definitely helping a lot of um, the souls passing. And what I mean is not just, you know, being present for people when they pass, but maybe through your experience in this life, you've experienced a lot of being close to death or experiencing near death experience or having experienced a near death experience. Um, you know, that could be part of the initiation, but you see how there's like half, half. And what I'm seeing here is that it's gifting you with an ability that a lot of people may not have, you know, if they don't have this, um, this sensitivity to appreciate the cycles of life, to appreciate the season and the beauty of different stages of life. And that's something that um, is definitely part of 
you know, your, it, it seems like in this lifetime, you've been initiated to deepen this gift and it might have felt hidden or on and off because it was going through this deepening, almost like in the cave, it took the cycles that it needed to, to take in order to have vision. Now, remember how I said that you were connected to time and maybe knowing the future or the past or being able to go into those timelines. Look at this. Working with a compass. You're definitely connected in that sense. Some of you, uh, you might even be able to develop the ability to uh, remote view. Make sure that you are protected when you, you're doing those things. And what I mean by protected is that you shield yourself with, with light, with your spirit team, um, because <laughs> there's a lot of maybe other people that could be doing this. So you want, you, you want to bring the highest light um, with those things. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else we want to know about this? This, wow. I mean, like what? Six of Wands and the King of Wands. This is something that is supposed to be part of leading you to your success. This is part also of your leadership. And what I mean by this is that, um, you know, how you're going to activate or how you've been activating or continue to activate this gift of intuition, those extra senses, that connection to the elements, that connection to time and space, to dimensions, uh, you know, that connection also to souls coming in and out. It's very mystical. It's very, uh, you know, maybe eccentric to some other people. And yet, and yet, pile number one, if some of you started to uh, doubt you know, about coming out with some of your uh, abilities or things that you have dreamed and you see manifest, this is a confirmation for you to start sharing more of this gift. This is part of your leadership. This is part of your success. I mean, those cards, you cannot do like better uh, tarot cards as far as this guidance. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to pull now from my deck of frequencies. Okay, as far as what you could be needing. If some of you have um, any type of blocks or feel um, any type of fear. Okay, I have a lot of things that are coming up, but because it's a general reading, I'm just going to rely more on the cards. Okay, let's see what wants to come up. Yeah, I was not surprised. Healing the spiritual warrior. This is my super empath playlist, okay? And I'm not surprised because I created, this is my first quote-unquote vibrational pharmacy album, you know, as far as like healing myself through sound is because as an empath, I've, I've struggled with a lot of those things, which is like many, many type of broadcast all the time. And this is where you have to strengthen your boundaries. This is where when you start strengthening your boundaries, you're able to be more connected to source. Not that you're not, but be able to know what's your stream, what's your channel all about. Yeah. Okay. So I would suggest this as part of your healing. Um, I'm going to link here uh, the album because some of you maybe there's just healing the spiritual warrior came up but there's different uh ones part of this playlist that could resonate with some of you as it's a general reading that's all i have oh my god this pile is so exciting i would love to hear how you felt about this and if that's you down below in the comments I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light, and remember to like those videos to support the channel to grow. Namaste, Soul Tribe. If you chose pile number two with Archangel Ariel and connect with nature, 
let's look at your hidden gifts. Okay, so we have here, if you chose by zodiac sign, Taurus, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Sagittarius. Okay, we'll put them on the side and look at the beginning of this pile. Okay, we have challenges. Take time out from problems or conflicts or approach softly to avoid making matters worse. With property, a property purchase or sell for many, but heed the security concerns in any transactions. Okay. The staff. Oh. Hmm. Soul retrieval. The curse. The sun. Wow, this is, this is impressive. Growth. I challenge myself to step outside of my comfort zone as I travel on the road to growth and illumination. Act. Upon waking, I am ready to act on my passions and dreams. And those three. I'll look at those a little. Well, no. Let's look at this first. Because I have a lot that's coming forward. Let me gather my thoughts. From what I'm seeing here is that you have, it almost feels like unspeakable because of how society perceives this type of gifts. And what I mean by this, I feel your connection to the elements as if you could control them as if there was a strong connection to the weather, as if you could summon, you know, it feels very, <laughs> it feels very prophetic, it feels very, um, you know, Moses with the staff, with the energy here uh, that could be uh, spoken uh, through um, the Ten Commandments. There's a relationship to even I would say shift, shape shift, you know, with the challenges and the property, almost a way to use the element as an alchemist. There's no alchemist cards in all my decks here, except the tarot with, you know, the magician. But it seems that you're able to work with elements in ways that can be, again, just and that could be just as simple as being an herbalist, someone that can see how one herb and a certain dosage of an herb could be uh, lethal or a cure. So some of you, you know, with this property and the challenges, it's kind of um, very much about understanding the properties of elements, the alchemy of a certain substance and how through certain principles you can make them grow or create something new. And, you know, as an illustration, that could be even just someone that has 
um, a passion for recycling plastic and would find a way to use the elements to recycle and offer something greater with this plastic. You know, um, you can see how some of the very, um, you know, uh, esoteric and mystical expression of a capacity can be brought down also into practical aspect. Someone that can shift substance or has access to understand this, this type of chemistry. So it could be a chemist of the soul, because I really feel as some of you, it could be through, you know, uh, shamanic journeying, uh, you know, through different type of uh, ceremonies that you could offer a certain growth for people to overcome their challenge and change their own value, their own way of, you know, relating to themselves, relating to their self-worth, relating to what they have, they own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, when I do those, I'm like, I never know what's going to come up. You definitely have an ability or a very keen awareness of dosage. And what I mean by this is your, you know, this archangel that comes up, that's connected to nature, you're able to know when something is too much, you know, or not enough. You know, it, with here, like not enough sun, not enough space, uh, you could be someone also through this journeying that helps people reach, heal traumas. So even in that sense, you could be a psychologist, a psychiatrist, knowing the proper uh, chemistry for the brain or for a certain aspect of the different layers of body to work together. It seems more holistic than medical, but we can just rule out certain aspect of the Western medicine, because again, it's inspired from nature. But I feel that you are probably someone that is, has maybe both type of knowledge. Mm -hmm. All right, let's expand from this. We have no... unlikely with the ties and I think I'm getting a lot of images especially activation then just the whole sentences and not the right time mm -hmm. remember what I said here as far as uh, the journeying to retrieve parts of the soul maybe fragments you know if you experience trauma Maybe some of, you know, those processes to cut ties with the past, you know, a broken, a broken, oh my God, we got the mushrooms here. Oh Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It could be medicinal mushrooms that are being used or something that is hidden in you that wants to be activated at this time, this relationship to journeying through medicinal mushrooms or any type of herbal um, things like that to help with breaking free from the past, uh, the negative patterns. And it almost feels like, you know, some of the lower uh, vibrational expression, uh, you know, of your, of whatever experience you've gone through, traumas, you know, with the skull energy, Things that um, could also have transpired from past lifetimes. Wow, pile number two. All right, let's look at the other cards. Stillness. Beautiful. Reflect on this moment with love, kindness, and compassion. We have the mentor. Wow. Some of you, you're, 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 this is this is something you know you're meant to 
act upon. You might have to go through your own process of growth, but... Mm -hmm. And the unseen. Wow. Yeah. You know, through this process here, I feel that being still is part of the activation. So some of you, if you pick that pile and you're like, Audrey, nah, I don't think I could ever do this, okay? This is going to come from your stillness. It's hidden. Remember, you're here to hear some messages about something that is a hidden gift, that wants to be heard, that wants to speak to you through me, okay? And it seems that maybe some of you, if you're on that process, maybe part of you is, is being called to journey, do some type of journeying, finding a mentor, uh, if you're in that process, so you can grow and there's in doing this alchemical process. Some of you, you might just also be uh, studying certain topics in school or certain uh, certification that you're getting that is part of this process. And maybe you didn't realize that it was going to lead you to uncover such a gift. Yeah. Let's look at those healing, heal yourself card. They might help us with this process. We have have faith. Mm. Okay, let me move a little bit all of this. I didn't know how I was going to fit all this, but it always seems to work. I feel like the faith needs to be here. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to the signs. And take off your masks. Did I say with an S? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure, but look at this. And I said with an S. And I never actually ever, I've owned this deck for what? Five years plus? <sighs> yeah, more. I don't, <laughs> uh, and I've never seen the S in parenthesis, but I said it. Okay, so. I feel that you're, if you're not at that level of your gift and channeling it, first of all, have faith because you happen to be here and hear this, okay? Especially if you're still listening. <laughs> so there, there is definitely a spirit that wants you to hear, you know? Have faith in maybe you're going to meet the specific uh, person, mentor, or find the perfect course, anything that is in alignment to move you towards deepening or unveiling this aspect of yourself. Because there's also the unseen, and there's also the challenges and the property with all of this. And I feel that some of you, maybe if you're still living a life that's very hustle-bustle, Okay, if you're still running around, okay, there could be, you could be ignoring this aspect of yourself. You might not realize this. And now, because I said mask, I do feel that there is a process for you to come about that is going to help you unveil. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, but if you're not, I'm going to share this again because uh, I share it every time I do the cosmic weather forecast when I talk about the cosmic dance between the sun and the moon. When you're working with your life force, kundalini energy that helps you unveil the sun and the moon, the sun card and the high priestess in the tarot, it is connected to your third eye. When we have a new moon, it's merge in front of the third eye and it moves around the skull, okay? So we're kind of creating a square, then uh, an opposition with the full moon, another square, you know, coming here, okay? So when we go through this, there is just like a natural cosmic peeling, okay, of the cosmic onion, <laughs> if we can call it this. But what it does is as you allow this cosmic dance to reframe, reshape your vision, 
Okay? What was unseen will be seen. Okay? It does require stillness. It does requiring having faith and wanting to activate this gift. So I'm trusting that the ones that are still watching it to this part of the reading do want this. Okay? You do want this. So this is where we're going to pull the tarot cards and we're going to ask some questions. What do we need to know, spirit, okay, for, to further this activation? You know, um, we have a lot of information here. How can we be supported? Um, what do we need to know to feel supported in this process? Can we receive some further guidance? All right. Wow. Look at, wow, I cannot believe it. Okay, you're not going to believe it. Like, this is the sun card, just with the sun and the moon. Now, the chariot is the Cancer Zodiac sign. Now, we know that, and uh, maybe you don't, but the moon is associated with Cancer. So, you're getting exactly what I said, as far as the cosmic dance. And what it's saying with those cards, and specifically Cancer, it's talking about how it's going to help you shift Okay, uh, maybe a certain, it's a card of change. It's going to help you shape shift, change your perception of yourself because this is the sun. This is how you look at yourself. And maybe the way you look at yourself, you're not uh, fully appreciating the type of, of, of hidden gift that wants to come out of you. Maybe some of you don't realize it because it's in the small little act and you have to acknowledge your growth. As you acknowledge your growth, you're claiming to the universe that you've seen the results of your shadow work, your journaling, your meditation. You're, you're affirming this. And what it gives you is that the universe responds back with more of those results, with more of those gifts that are becoming a part of you and your process. So reconfirmation here of what I was saying, um, bringing your awareness of your spiritual growth or how you've changed is part of the process, okay? Again, if you like and connect and vibe <laughs> with what I share, definitely connect to the cosmic weather forecast with the new moon, the first quarter, the full moon, and the last quarter. This is my way to support us and support myself, you know, through this unveiling. I used to feel that, you know, the cosmic dance was more of a cosmic <laughs> chaos, <laughs> okay? And I was like, I don't know how to go with this. And you know, I was called to do, you know, astrology and, and things like this. And I was like, I don't know how to go through this with ease. And this in particular really supported me because I knew that it was helping me through the cycles. Okay. And here, when you have growth, you know, you're working with cycles. Do we have more messages for pile number two about this gift? When they start working more with the cycles, okay. So when you're in stillness and working with the cycles, you have here the King of Pentacles, the Seven of Cups, and the Nine of Cups. So what's interesting here is that I feel that there's going to be a lot of stability and material abundance that will come from you purging through the timelines, okay? Because this is, you know, this card is shows many choices, many options. And through this process, okay, you're seeing that this hidden gift of working with the elements helps you also, um, you know, finding remedy, finding the right property, the right... Uh, soul medicine to retrieve your light, to retrieve your power, to retrieve your confidence, to retrieve your sight as far as who you are truly from inside out and be able to see 
the 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 golden chest here like the the treasure that you hold inside and let it be unleashed i really feel that for you uh my dear pile number two as part of your hidden gifts so that's what i have now if you're struggling with this you know that i like to support you with frequencies okay let's see what we have among all the frequencies that i've created thus far okay what can support pile number two through this process i have many things that i could share but let's see what the cards want want to share themselves okay so we have so the star seed this is my star seed playlist okay in the star seed playlist i have um i have what do i have here i have let me check that for you in that playlist i have the cyrus frequency so very much connected to your gathering spiritual wisdom uh connecting to source so you might want to look at this i am going to share the playlist here uh some of the other frequencies and this one came up as well which is in particular the solfagio weaving those are activations uh, as part of this playlist um, that is part of the youtube soul tribe membership okay so it came up um i'm gonna see if there's anything else for my dear ones for pile number two as far as healing but you know with this i feel that some of the those abilities to elements chemistry i wouldn't be surprised this is this is from a connection to the stars your particular connection to uh, how your chart is weaved with the cosmos another card that is um a youtube membership which is expansion of inner essence and I'm going to list here, um, this is part of the album, uh, Your True Abundant Nature. The first two uh, frequencies are to allow you to see the imbalances in your energy, okay? And the second one, to do psychic surgery, psychic healing. Some of you, that might be what you need. If you have access to all four, what I do, I personally have done for, I think about four or five months. I just recently switched my playlist, but I was playing uh, the whole album at night. So that was helping me doing psych uh, psychic surgery and reweaving and bringing back more of my wholeness, my oneness through the binaural beats. I'm using binaural beats, different types of frequency that are very powerful that have been even studied uh, and proven to do this type of thing. I was like mind blown when I saw this. So um, I'm going to put the album so you can have access to my true abundant nature or your true abundant nature. I didn't remember, but um, and you might use whatever, which one that you have access to that could be really supportive at this time. Okay, pile number two. Wow. I mean, uh, if that's you, please let me know in the comment below. Let me know where you're at on this journey, where you've been so far, because this is like we need this type of gift for sure um, to be shown and to be shared. And yeah, I feel like as soon as you are listening to this message, you know, you're going to get some more synchronicities that are going to help you uh, to shine that light brighter we have even here i would say for numbers 22 and 11 so any repetition of those numbers in particular could be again signs <laughs> of the universe to remind you of this reading all right that's all i have i'm sending you many blessings much love and light and remember to like those videos it supports the channel to grow Thank you. If you chose pile number three with Archaea Mercy and cherish your sacredness, let's look at your hidden gifts. And if you chose with your zodiac sign, we have Pisces, we have Cancer, we have a Libra and Virgo. All right, let's get started. <laughs> 
Oh my god, it's been so exciting so far. I'm loving those readings. <laughs> so thank you so much for supporting me and being here. I so appreciate it. All right, pile number three, what are your hidden gifts? <laughs> oh my god! If you didn't watch the preparation, I mean, one of the cards was about patience. And when I just bursted this, I was like... <laughs> I was feeling like, you know, you had to work on your patience, you know? <laughs> it's like, come on, give it to me, Audrey, just tell me. Just tell me now, that's it, <laughs> you know? Um, and what I want to remind you is just the same way when you're watching a movie and reading a book, you wouldn't want to skip straight to the end. I mean, except when we don't like a story or we're bored or we don't like a certain movie, then we want to we wanna skip ahead. And that's kind of a reminder here that I'm feeling from spirit. You know, if you're going to try to find shortcuts to this journey and to those hidden gifts, you're not going to savor it the same way. It's not going to taste the same. It's going to be the same result, but it's not going to have the same taste. And as a result, you won't find the fulfillment of those gifts in the way they're meant to fulfill you, in the way... You're meant to share them and use them, you know? <clears throat> Definitely <clears throat> the throat, this whole speech. <laughs> so maybe some of you, you had to work on your throat chakra. Uh, maybe your gift is related to the throat. Maybe communication. We have, uh, we do have some uh, Libra here, okay, as far as the air element. And there's communication here. Maybe finding moderation. Yeah, okay. Let's see. We have friendship. A friend needs your help, your kindness, and excellent counseling skills. We've put them back on track. Okay, talk about communication here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Personal riches. Small successes are likely now and bigger ones are on the way. Finances could improve dramatically, but avoid get rich schemes. Wow. Oh my God. Like, didn't we say about the shortcuts? Pile number three and the communication. Wow. I love this. I feel like I want to put this above. Okay. We'll see why. <laughs> okay. Then we have the beloved. Wow. You definitely have a really big heart you know or this aura that is very loving okay I'm gonna shush <laughs> completion lessons I look for opportunities in life's challenges via my dreams and I learn the lesson. Yes. I feel I want to see this one. Inner alchemy. Inner alchemy is achieved when you react to fear with love. Wow. Okay. I'm going to wait for those. Pile number three, your hidden gift is very much related to your heart, to your compassion, to your ability to love, express love, show love, gather people you love, and even people that don't feel loved you know there's a certain sense here of you being strongly attracted to bring sacred spaces so you could be someone that relates to being a high priestess high priest or just someone that loves to gather friends and gather and create events or create um, certain spaces for celebration maybe even for some of you, it could be sacred spaces for reviewing certain life's lesson, maybe even counseling or even, uh, you know, certain groups, you know, uh, groups where 
um, you're talking about a certain topic. It could be any groups because it could be like for grief. It could be for recovery. Uh, it could be for self-development. It could be any type of groups. It seems that um, your heart is just very, very expanded. And your, your path, you know, it's almost like you were gifted with this, but you would only find true, true fulfillment of this gift through obviously the ups and downs, you know, of life's, life's path, the lessons to bring more alchemy. I feel that you could be someone that helps people shift <laughs> their sh into gold, okay? So their struggle into something greater. And what I like to call this, if some of you have watched some of my readings in the past, when I talk about the Chiron wound, um, you could be a, a wounded healer. You could be a chironic wounded healer. You could be someone that is, has gone through a lot of healing themselves, trauma themselves. And that's why it gives you a lot of depth. But when I talk about the chiron wound, I talk about turning scars into stars. And that's something I feel greatly from you. Like it's, it's something, it's almost it's almost an innit part of your soul, okay? I'm not saying that you didn't have at any given time some challenges, especially with this type of heart. You could have been taking advantage of. You could have, you know, trying to fix others or, you know, with the counseling, you know, fix others when they were not ready and maybe as a result, sometimes of your life, there was more walls around your heart. But your heart is your biggest gift here. And it's, it's almost like a furnace for, you know, whatever experience to be brought into sanctity, into being sacred, to honor the hard times and celebrate the great times. I do feel this is part of your natural inclination to celebrate, um, to hold ceremonies. You could be someone that just likes to invite people in your home, or that could be part of your gift and that you could manifest in, you know, being an event planner, a uh, wedding planner. <laughs> uh, you could even, you know, plan even funerals. You know, it's all about anything that has to do with honoring a part of our lives. It, 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 and that's part of your gift. It's almost like there's no, uh, there's no part of life that doesn't, that doesn't deserve this honor, you know, to be acknowledged. So you could even create groups where, where people can f find space for purging their grief, talking about things that they can't talk uh, to their own family, to their own friends, you know, it's just beautiful type of counseling. Some of you could be counselor, okay, but there's, there's an alchemy here that you're offering from your heart. And usually people that can offer this type of alchemy is because they had to go, to go through this type of fire. They had to alchemize. And that is I would say like maybe it's hidden maybe to yourself because you're not seeing it fully because you might be always focused on, you know, catering to other people's needs, uh, your friends, your family. But if you found this reading and you're still thinking that that's nah, that's not a big deal, okay, that's not, you know, I'm not that loving, no, 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 this reading found me for a reason, for you to honor the same way you offer space for others to, um, to have this healing, 
occurring so your heart healer soul healer soul alignment okay this is your message for you to see and acknowledge and have reverence for this in yourself you know there's a lot of forgiveness there's a lot of compassion that stem from this pile all right let's see the rest of the cards we have ooh, the seed with a pearl inside. I mean, we know the symbolism of the pearl. It's movement and movement and from irritation that creates such beauty. You know? Wow. You know, with all those lines here, all those lines, all those lines, you seem to be an ancient soul. You see, you're an old soul. Maybe you were, you know, told as a child already that you were uh, in, in very wise for your age. Maybe you were hanging out with older people. And again, it's not about age, but it's more like you had a certain wisdom or a certain attraction uh, to things that were not of your age or, you know, maybe, you know, wouldn't be <laughs> qualified as cool or trendy. <laughs> With all those lines also, uh, this is where I, I feel this connection to Lemuria with the Aura Quartz. If some of you have Aura Quartz, I would suggest wearing it. Um, there's through what is said from this crystal is that each line is some type of download is some type of encryption and i feel that um through the path that you had to go through through the alchemy uh, the, of the lessons of the completion this lifetime you're definitely coming out this lifetime with the result of more than this life okay and i feel like it's it's you're reaching a completion okay in this lifetime of this gift it's almost as if you're telling like oh that's not so you know special to be compassionate or whatever but you might not realize your level of compassion and you might not realize that it has stemmed from many things that your heart endured Many cycles, many lifetimes, many experiences that led you to be able to offer this type of compassion. We have here the hunter of this horse coming out of most like what seems to be the forest and going to the light. You know what's interesting? <laughs> When I said the dark, the forest, and I was gonna say the dark forest, uh, I just was watching the uh, some of the episode of the mm, Rings of Power. I, I love this type of you know mystical uh, saga. Um, and there is so this is where I feel like you you in this lifetime you're meant to find power from all that you had to overcome. Maybe some of you, with the hunter, I feel that maybe you had to overcome a lot of things that haunted you, or even feeling haunted. And I'm going to share it because I'm hearing it, and that's not going to resonate with everyone, but I don't care. <laughs> um, it could be the witch's wound. It could be you know, being a past healer and someone that was maybe some witches because of the circle, the friendship, the personal riches, the, you know, the sacredness, the, the, the fact that you're gathering, maybe, you know, that that would create with this card and all that we've mentioned before, uh, even knowing inner alchemy, uh, having reverence, for the elements, for nature, all of this could have been part of the witch's wound. Okay, so some of you, I want to share this. So there's a retrieval of power here that is emerging. And this is almost, this is the timeline. This is the lifetime. I'm hearing it very clearly for you, my dear. Pile number three. Okay, let's see what else we have. The flame. <sighs> Look at this. Okay, you had to 
you have to see that in you and you have to see that in you for this to come about. You had to see your own value. You had to look at yourself as the flame that you are, especially in the dark. So I would say here, you might also be someone that has this hidden gift of, um, you know, offering a place for people to confine and they could be like, they could like share their secrets, their most intimate dark aspects, dark experience, trauma. It, you're someone that can handle this. You can handle this because you had to overcome not just this lifetime, but many, many repetition of cycles that are giving you this particular gift of sacredness, of sacred space, of sanctity, of reverence, of humility. And you're the flame. You're someone that also brings light in people's life. You might also bring a lot of joy, love, wherever you go, pile number three. Know this, please. Honor this, please. Please. <laughs> I feel some of you, you really want to be in that space of honoring yourself, okay? Because so many people benefit from this. So many, and, and, and this is part of a soul's oath. I definitely feel that something uh, that is dear to your heart for you to achieve in this lifetime, offering uh, space for people to heal, for people to feel seen with the flame and the power, for pe people to feel empowered, to feel inspired, to feel like their cycles and their repetition or whatever trouble are leading to something greater mm -hmm. let's see what else courage i mean dude <laughs> we can't make that up i love it entrapment mm -hmm. you know the entrapment with that wounded uh wounded warrior witch's wound you know, being entrapped in a certain perception of what you are and hear the patience, okay? So patience came, um, and it could have been through this, you know, I, I want to share with you. I feel that some of you, if you've ever experienced being impatient in your life, it could have been a trauma response. It could have been uh, that you were feeling some type of pain that you were ignoring and it made you snappy, but it was supposed to reflect back to you, hey, that's that's not your true nature. That's You're not someone that is impatient. And you could have been mostly impatient more with yourself. Okay, that's very common um, that I've seen this through, you know, my clients and through my personal experience, how we can be less patient with ourselves. Okay, but that's something that I'm seeing as part of your gift. It build up your courage, you know, it build up your courage, being able to see also, uh, you know, how you were able to offer things to others and then probably through certain life lessons, certain friendships um, or, you know, friendships that fell apart seeing what you were giving to others and not giving yourself. So it helped you get out of this uh, this uh, locked here, feeling haunted, feeling chased, feeling um, maybe even cursed uh, through this, you know. But what I'm seeing is a beautiful, you know, a beautiful outcome of an expression of a the goddess, the muse, the high priestess, the, uh, you know, the expression of even just if you're male, just a guardian, you know, a guardian, uh, I'm not going to say a knight, <laughs> but it's a little bit like a savior. It, it has a little bit of that energy because it's someone when, when you're entering the room, you light up the room. Because you had to go through a lot of darkness, you had to bring a lot of courage, you had to do a lot of alchemy, and you're offering this space to others. And if you ever lost your light, lost your flame, lost your inspiration, and if you do ever 
coming forward, okay, or you have or you are, uh, know that this is because it's a call to fill up your cup, that you're not in balance with your give and take. So through this process, you know, when you're patient with yourself, your flame grows stronger because love is patience. That's something I've learned. And I remember first time that I heard this in my mind's eye or, you know, mind's ear. <laughs> love is patience. I was like, whoa. And every time I was becoming impatient, I was like, telling myself, Audrey, you're not loving. And I really realized that it was helping me put a lot of distance between what was happening and, you know, understanding, is it me? Why am I impatient? Why am I short? And then often seeing that, you know, there was something going on with me I was not acknowledging. So that's something that is, I'm hearing God sent to you because that's something that, you're going to be able to offer through those circles, through those moments, through those gatherings, through those events, you know, that are going to also help others get out of their own trap, entrapment, their feeling, uh, maybe also on the run. Maybe some of them just always felt like um, on the move, on the go because of that haunted feeling from past life or even from this life or from the trauma response, never feeling safe. This is something you're offering and maybe you had to not feel safe or you had to overcome not feeling safe to be able to handle that space and offer it. Okay, so let's see uh, with my frequencies if there's anything that wants to come forward to support you in this process or if you um, have yet to feel that you're aligned with this energy. I really feel pile number three, you're, you're there. Oh, wow. Oh, I love this for you. Unity consciousness, unity consciousness. I could not pick a greater uh, frequency for you, my, my love. <laughs> I was going to say yes, yes. Um, that's all I have for you. I'm not even going to pull some tarot cards. It's just really got really inspiring. Um, if that's you, pile number three, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know how that resonates and how your path is unfolding. I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light. And remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. <laughs> Namaste.